Good morning. Welcome to Mercy Vineyard Church Service Online. We are so glad that you're joining us this morning. I'm looking into the chairs as if you guys are here, so humor me and pretend that you're sitting with us. Um, join us in singing a new song to open our service today. Um, I heard it at a conference that I went to, and the beauty of it is it's written in Spanish and English. It's not an English song translated into Spanish, but the first verse is talking about the power. We come to adore you and to sing to you and to tell you that you are God, the God of power, the God of rest. We just come and we sing to who you are is what the first part says in Spanish. So um, sing along with us and uh, enjoy this new song.
joy, God, that we just exchange anxiety for the peace that you can give. We exchange helplessness for the hope that you provide, Father. So Jesus, wherever we are, I ask that you come and you fill that space, and then you fill the space next to it, God. In your son's name, amen. Good morning. Welcome to Mercy's online service. We're glad you're joining us. I'm Mike. I'm on staff here at Mercy, and this is Ivy. Hi. We're going to get us kicked off this morning with some brief announcements. Then we'll hear, pre we'll, we'll hear preaching from the Bible. We'll have an opportunity to take communion together and spend time together in worship. Nothing to say? Okay. Newcomers, if you're checking out Mercy for the first time online, welcome. We're glad you're here with us. If you'd like to receive our email updates or get in touch with us for any reason, please fill out a connect card linked at the top of our website and in the Facebook post. <laughs> <laughs> As you know, all of our activities at Mercy are online. Our services and weekday devotionals are posted on Facebook, YouTube, on the Mercy app, and on our website. If you could, just invite your friends, your neighbors, and your family to tune into our services. This is an easy way to check out our church from the comfort of your home. Our Mercy groups are also finding new and creative ways to meet together online. Visit the groups page on our website and email the leader to learn how to get involved. Is that good? <laughs> Should we keep going? Yes. Okay. Uh, something new is beginning soon. Uh, we're kicking off a special online at Mercy Wednesday season on Wednesday nights in May that'll run from 8 to 9 p.m. You have three options to choose from. First, the community prayer group led by Brett and Jess Carlson, along with Pastor Tommy, will continue to meet over Zoom for those who want to participate in corporate prayer each week. Anyone can join the Zoom call directly with the link on the events page or the Mercy app. Sorry. Second, Pastor Cassie. You know Cassie. Yes. Pastor Cassie is leading a class called Liminal Space, Campfire Lessons with Jesus. Together, you will be looking at the important work of transition and in-between space. And finally, Pastor John is facilitating, facilitating a class on hearing from God to learn how to recognize God's voice more clearly every day in two-way conversations with God. Just head over to mercyvineyard.org slash events to learn more and sign up, or you can message me or one of the class leaders for more info. Should we do more? Yes. Okay. <laughs> we are thankful uh, for the many of you who are giving in this season to support the work of the church. Uh, thank you, those. Uh, thank you, uh, especially to those of you who have been giving faithfully to Mercy for many years, and thank you to the, those of you who are just beginning to give to Mercy. For those who have not yet taken the first step. Uh, of giving at Mercy, we'd like to invite you to begin giving electronically through PushPay on the Mercy website or through the Mercy app. It's easy and safe. If you do prefer to write a check, that's totally fine. You can mail it directly to the church address and it'll get to the right place. I want to look at you. <laughs> okay, last, last announcement and then we'll move on. Lastly, I want to remind you that our prayer team is available to pray with you at 10.45 a.m. after the live stream ends. The link to join the Zoom call is on the top of our website and in the video post. Here's how it works. Like Cassie said last week, when you join the Zoom call, you will enter a waiting room. From there, you'll be connected to a prayer coordinator who will assign you to a private Zoom breakout room with a trained prayer team member. That's where you can confidentially share your prayer request and receive prayer. Okay, that's enough from us. Uh, we're going to dig into our service this morning together. Next up, we're going to be hearing from Pastor Leo as he brings us a message. Where did you go? Okay, bye. We'll see you soon. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Amy, and worship team, and good morning, Mercy. Here we are today in my car. Um, today was just one of those days that I need to get out of the house. 
and and here we are right it's a beautiful day got a lake right next to me it's I'm, I'm happy to be here and i'm happy to be sharing the word of god with you today uh we're gonna be in john chapter 17 but before we go there i wanted to share a story about about me and my dad growing up right as most of you know i grew up in brazil that's no secret i, I talk about it probably too much but uh but my mom and my dad they got divorced when i was really young and i honestly have like, no memories of them together Right. And my dad always lived about three hours away from me. So I didn't get to see him as much as I would want to. But every chance I got, I got to go visit my dad. And and we got to go on big, long road trips together because my dad is a truck driver. Still is. He's been doing it for 35 years. So that's my dad. Every chance that I had, I would go on a road with my dad. And those were some of my favorite memory, memories growing up. Right. My dad would take me to to Rio, to the Amazon, to all of the amazing beaches in Brazil. And, you know, I got to see my country with my dad and got to spend some quality time with him. Just just the two of us doing doing work together, traveling. And, you know, we had amazing conversations. We listened to music, watch sports, watch movies. It was it was just like the best time, just me and my dad. And uh, but there was one thing that always happened is the last ride of the trip, the last leg of the journey, whatever it is, the last day, that last ride. Look, there's a boat. There's a boat over there. <laughs> Sorry. But uh, it was always that last ride of the trip. It was when my dad took the time to have like the, the dad talk with me. You know, whatever it is I needed in that season of life, you know, um, whatever discipline my dad had to do, whatever parenting my dad had to do, it was usually saved for that last ride. And I knew it was coming. It happened every time. And, and um, but it still felt special because it was like, you know, like this, we're, we're closing this strip before I got to go back home. And my dad would give me the last talk because it would be months before I saw him again. And I always treasure those those last ride talks with my dad. And they, they made a big difference in my life. And I think that today where we are in the story in John chapter 17, it feels like a last ride talk between Jesus and his disciples. Because if you think about it, right, if we pick up the story in John 13, we see Jesus going with them to the upper room to have the last supper. And that's where Jesus washes their feet, tells them about what's going to happen. They... They, you know, Jesus tells them about the Holy Spirit in John chapter 14, John chapter 15. He, he gives one of my favorite messages ever about how we are divine and he is the branches. And apart from him, we can't do nothing. But with him, we can bear much fruits. And it's like he, he's just giving them like everything they need to know. John 16, in this world, you will have trouble, but don't be afraid. I have overcome the world. So he's just like giving them the last ride talk that last thing that they need before jesus would go on to to be arrested crucified and die and, and rise again in the third day spoiler alert but uh but this was like the the he knew that this was their last time all together and it was going to be significant so he feels like that last ride kind of talk and jesus ends that last ride talk with the disciples by praying and he prays out loud so that they can hear Right, John gets a glimpse into Jesus's prayer life. And I think that Jesus did that on purpose, right? Because he's not only teaching us the most important things that we need to know, he's also showing us the most important thing that we need to do as his followers, as his disciples. You know, he was showing his disciples like, hey, I'm going away, but this matters to me. So this should matter to you too. And I want you to learn how to do this. And it's significant because... Think about it. We usually learn how to do something by watching someone do it, right? Kids, they learn how to talk by hearing others talk. That's how they learn how to speak. We learn how to pray usually by hearing other people pray too. And that's what Jesus was trying to do to his disciples, trying to teach them how to pray. And also Jesus really believed in prayer. Jesus often would go away just to pray, just to connect with the Father. And, and this was such a crucial time. And, and he needed a prayer and he knew that his disciples needed to see him praying because they were going to go through some hard times too and they were going to need that connection to God through prayer. So Jesus teaches them how to pray in John 17. The whole chapter is just a prayer. Um, I'm not going to read verse by verse, but let's get started. John 17, verse 1. Here we go. After Jesus said this, he looked toward heaven and prayed, Father, the hour has come. 
Glorify your son that your son may glorify you. For he granted him authority over all people that he may give eternal life to all those whom you have given him. Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory that I had with you before the world began. So we see Jesus here in this chapter praying for himself. This is honestly one of the most amazing chapters in all of the Bible because this is God the Son speaking to God the Father. And he's saying some things here that I honestly like can't even begin to really comprehend. When Jesus says, And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. I got nothing. I have no idea. Like, that's too, too great, too beautiful, too, too glorious for me to understand. The glory that Jesus had with God the Father before the world began? I don't know. <laughs> you know, I was not there. I was not invited to that meeting. Um, I have, so, so that's, that's like, some authors call this, this chapter, John 17, the holiest of holies in scripture, because this is God speaking to God and we get a glimpse in, in what they're talking about. And they're talking about glory. And this glory, you know, when we look throughout the Bible, the word glory can be translated into weight. And it often refers to God's presence. So what I feel like Jesus was saying is like, God, like I, Father, I want your presence with me now, like he was in the beginning. Like how, what we had before all of this happened, I want it again. Let your glory be with me. Let your presence be with me now. And, and I think that's beautiful. And, and we see here Jesus praying for himself, you know, like he's kind of what I get that the sense of this prayer was like, like, Father, I, I finished the job. There's still some left to do, and I'm going to need your help. I'm going to need you with me right now. I've finished the job, but help me continue to finish strong. Right? And so we see Jesus praying for himself. So question, if Jesus needed to pray for himself, how much do we need to pray for ourselves? Right? Like, how often do, we, do you pray for you? How often do I pray for myself? And what do we pray about? Right. If Jesus needed prayer for himself, how much more do we? Right. I know in this season, I, I find myself praying for for me more often because being a Brazilian, being an Enneagram seven and being quarantined, that's that doesn't go well together. <laughs> you know, there's so many things that I miss and FOMO is just breathing down my neck, the fear of missing out. And I just I just want to go and do things. I want to play basketball and, you know, my my, you know, like everything's just different and I and, and so I find myself praying for me more often because I need it this is a tough season how are you praying for yourself right the first part of John 17 Jesus prays for himself and we should pray for ourselves too part two of this prayer we can break it down in about three parts part two we see Jesus praying for his disciples let me read here verse 11 through 15 I will remain in the world no longer but they are still in the world I am coming to you, Holy Father. Protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. See, Jesus in this chapter, he's praying that, he's praying for his disciples. He's praying for the people that he had just spent the past few years with, their, his little community. And he's, he's praying for their protection, for their unity, and for their, for their honestly, for their joy. Right, we see here in verse 13, he says, I am coming to you now, but I say these things while I'm still in the world, so that they may have the full measure of joy within them. Um, Jesus knows that he's about to leave and the disciples are about to face some tough times. And he wants them to be protected, to be unified, and to have joy. He says in verse 15 that his prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. So again, like he, Jesus is not unaware that, that his disciples were about to face some hard situations, but he's asking the father to protect them, to keep them united, to, to give them joy so that they could, they could face the times and, 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 and still be victorious. He prays for their protection from the evil one to protect them from evil. It reminds you of the, the Lord's prayer, right? And, um, and I think that's very significant when Jesus prays for them. He prays for the protection, for the unity, and for their joy. 
And Jesus takes time to pray for, pray for his friends, to pray for his disciples, to pray for his little community. And the question again is, you know, Jesus prayed for his community. We should pray for our community too. And right now we're going through some, we're going through a season, right? We're going through some hard times. Uh, we can't be together in one building anymore in the same place and we miss each other there's difficulties with that uh, some of us you know we have uncertainty with our jobs some of us our living situation are, are different than others we may have a house full of kids and we're having to learn how to homeschool them or some of us may be alone and there's difficulties with that there's loneliness there's there's challenges you know some of us I mean, like this 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 thing hits us all differently but we're still all in it together so we should pray for our community. We should pray for our protection. Protection from sickness, protection from financial struggles, protection from you know, mental health issues, from everything. We need to pray for our protection. And we need to pray for our unity, that we still may be one as a church, even though we're separated by social distancing. And we should also pray for our joy. Jesus says that, that they may have a full measure of joy within them. We need joy. I need joy in this season. You know, through, through all, throughout all of this, joy is gold right now. So Jesus prayed for joy for his disciples. I pray joy for all of us. We need some joy. So mercy, let's take some time and pray for each other and pray for our community. Even though we're far away, we still need each other. So that's part two, right? Part one, Jesus prays for himself. We should pray for ourselves. Part two, Jesus prays for his disciples. Jesus prays for his community. We should pray for our community. Now, here we go. Part three. We're going to read verses 20 through 24. Check it out. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that they all may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I in them, you and me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, Though the world does not know you, I know you, that they and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. Jesus finishes this epic prayer by, by praying for all those who would believe. Specifically by praying for all those who would believe because of the work of Jesus' disciples that he was just praying for. You see, and, and those disciples, they will go on from, from there, they will go on to, to spread the good news of Jesus um, in Jerusalem, in Judea, to Samaritan, and to all the ends of the earth. And, and now here we are, right? We have a church in Northeast Minneapolis, and you have a Brazilian pastor speaking to you from his car about Jesus. <laughs> you know, the prayer that Jesus prayed is still being answered today. It's still going on. God heard that prayer and he's answering that prayer even now. So Jesus prays for all those who would come to believe. He prays for people who need prayer. He prays for people who need Jesus. And he's saying, God, I want, I want you to help my disciples to go and, 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 and preach the good news. And that prayer is still being answered. He prays that, that they may be one, that the, the, this big family of God, that they may be united in one body, that the glory that God had may be with them, that the presence of God may be with them. And, and he ends by, by saying, Righteous Father, I know you. I want them to know you. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you know in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. So Jesus is saying that he has made known the Father to us and he will continue to make the Father known. That he will continue to make the love of God known to us and we need it. The world needs the love of God right now, right? So Jesus is praying for people who come to believe. And I think that's special and powerful. 
pray for those who need prayer, praying for those who need Jesus. My my own life was marked by it. I know I've shared it many times, and uh, but if you don't know, I, I grew up most of my life kind of far from God. I just doing my own thing my mom made me go to church and i love her for it but um but i honestly was just about doing my own thing and you know it came to a point where when i was 18 years old living in new jersey i was you know just honestly in a really dark place i was kind of depressed and and my mom took me to church because if the, the rules were if i was living in her house under her roof i had to go to church so she took me to a brazilian church in new jersey and over there, one of the youth leaders saw me and kind of saw the shape that I was in. And he invited me to go to his small group every Thursday night. And, um, and he decided to pray and fast for me specifically, leading up to this big retreat where they take all the <laughs> all the people who need Jesus like myself. Um, so he went on a 40 day fast praying specifically for me. And, and honestly, like he kind of convinced me to go. My mom, you know, put me in a bus to go to that retreat. And, and when I got there, my life was absolutely completely rocked by Jesus. And I've never been the same since. And God honored his prayer. God honored the prayer of my my friend Sime, who prayed for me. You know, also my mom prayed for me. He honored that prayer. My grandfather prays for every single one of his kids and grandkids by by name daily. So there's all this all these prayers that that all led up to that, right? But Sime was praying for someone who needed Jesus, praying for those who would believe, and it changed my life. So the question is, if Jesus prays for those who who would believe. What should we do? Should we pray, right? How much should we pray? Is there somebody in your life right now that you know that they, they might not have anybody praying for them? They know that, you know that they're going through a hard time. You know that there's somebody in your life right now that needs Jesus. My encouragement for us is that we'll think about those people that will write their name down and we pray for them. Because God honors prayer. God answers prayer. So if Jesus prayed for those who would believe, let us us as a church also pray for those who need Jesus in our city, in our life. So, yeah, man, to close, this is one of my favorite verses. I just want to highlight it for a second because I think it really paints a, a, a human picture to Jesus, right? It's verse 24 where he says, I want those, he says, Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am. And I just kind of see the heart of Jesus in that. Like he, he really loves these people and he doesn't want to be away from them. So he's praying like, God, I want them to be with me. I want them to be in my presence. I, I, I love my people. Another, ver- another translation of the Bible says that, Father, I desire that they may be with me where I am. And, and you just get to see the, the heart of Jesus, that he loves his people and he doesn't want any social distancing he doesn't want separation he wants to be with his people Uh, kind of the same way that me and my dad we love those road trips because we got to be together we got to be in 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 each other's presence i feel like that's the heart of jesus that he wants us to be in his presence another boat Uh, he wants us to be in his presence he wants he wants there to be that connection that we may be with him where he is not only for all of eternity but right now He wants us to be with him. He wants his presence to be with us. He wants that connection. He wants that relationship. Because that's what it's all about. You know, he wants wants us to be along with him for the rides, you know. And I love that about Jesus. To close here, we're going to go to Hebrews chapter 7, verse 24 and 25. Because guess what? When Jesus prayed in John 17, I believe that he's still praying for us right now. Right, John, uh, Hebrews 7, verse 24 to 25 says this. But because Jesus lives forever, he has permanent priesthood. Therefore, he's able to save completely those who come to God through him because he always lives to intercede for them. Church, Jesus didn't stop praying for us in John 17. He's still praying for us now. That verse just told us that he always lives to intercede for us. Jesus is still praying for us. And because of that, he's able to save us completely from whatever is going on. So because Jesus is still praying, let us go and meet him. Let's go and be with him where he is in that place of prayer. Let's pray. Let's pray for ourselves. Let's pray for our community. And let's pray for those who need Jesus. Amen. My biggest prayer right now is help. I need help. We need help. Our whole, our, our whole world right now needs help. So let's pray. Jesus, 
help us. Jesus, we need you. We need your protection. We need unity. We need joy. We thank you for who you are. We thank you that you care for us, that you see us, that you know us, and that you're praying for us. So I'm asking you right now, let your glory be with us. Let your presence be with us and help us. Let your kingdom come and your will be done even now. In Jesus' name, amen. Mercy, thank you for hanging out with me in my car this morning. And Amy, let's go lead us into worship right now. Thank you, Amy. Let's worship the Lord together. In Jesus' name. We're gonna do communion a little bit different this Sunday. Um, so go ahead and get your communion supplies if you haven't already, and um, we'll have time to reflect and take it during the final song. So we'll have three songs for you, and here's our first one.
Cause your glory is so beautiful Your glory is so beautiful And the heartbeat of my life Is to worship in your light Cause your glory is so As children we come with arms open wide So desperate for you, so need of your life May our praise fill your ears, may our cries touch your heart We need your presence to change who we are. So we ask, come, Holy Spirit, and come in your power, come in, have it all praise. Come now and reign in all lives. Come, Holy Spirit. Desperate for you, so need of your life. May our praise fill your ears, may our Christ touch your heart. Cause we need your presence to change who we are. This Sunday, we're going to do communion a little bit different. Um, this next song is our last song, and it is a song about the Trinity and uh, the three parts of God and how each part is 
powerful and deserving of our worship. And so anytime during this song, I want you to kind of like how we do at church normally on Sundays, at any time during the song, take the communion. Um, and this song is just, it's a, it's a worship song about the goodness of who God is, that God, the Father is heavenly and Jesus is royalty and honored and the spirit is a holy wind. So during this time, just take communion at any time that you'd like. Uh, there's gonna be no formal, let's do it together this week. But um, so anytime during this song, Use your communion. Uh, my family, Easter Sunday, we used little mini Cadbury eggs and we had medicine cups with water in it. So whatever you have, I know there's been vitamins, there's been donuts, there's been whatever. It's not about what the, what the sacraments are. It's not that. It's about remembering and honoring that God said, remember me, remember what I've done for you. Remember the Father and the Spirit and, and Jesus and um, that his death came and happened, but he didn't stay dead. He came back to life. So that's the point of it is to remember that, that he's worthy of the worship because of what he's done and who he is. So here's our final song. Spirit of heaven. 
deserve this. You deserve us coming and taking time to stop and to reflect and to say that you're wonderful. Father, I pray that you come and that you would fill homes right now with your peace and presence for the week, Father. And Jesus, you deserve this. I'm thankful for you. We're thankful that you see the big picture of all of this when we get lost and confused in the day-to-day. -day. You see the end result. You see what's happening. You see the moment to God. You see us in the day-to-day -day also. Well, thanks for joining us. Um, if you'd like to receive prayer, the prayer team would love to pray with you. And there's a, a link in the comments that you can click where it'll, it'll send you to a private room where you can receive prayer. It'll look confusing with lots of people, but then it, it breaks you off into a private room with one person. Um, and take advantage of that. Even if you think, oh, this is just a simple thing that I need prayer for. There's no simple thing right now. We need, we need space to talk and to process and to invite Jesus in. So take advantage of that today. Thanks again. Um, hang in there. Love you guys and have, have a good week.